So it's 2 o'clock, I believe, and being timely. I'm going to mute everybody for right now, and you all can unmute your phone at any time. Thank you guys for joining the call this afternoon. Again, I'm very big on being prompt. Time is money. Um, today's presentation is International Investors United presentation deck for those who are looking to find a group of people that they can pull their monies together with and be able to um, literally be able to invest with. And so I'm also going to turn in my video so everyone can see me as well. All right. So if you are to join online, you should be able to see my face as well as you'll see the presentation. And this call is being recorded, so if you're able to um, see or hear it, you can always go back and look at it later. So, again, this goal is to literally be able to help everybody have a group of people that they can invest with um, and be able to buy back the block. Just a few ground rules. Um, if it's not on the agenda, it will not be addressed. Um, I'm asking everyone on the call to respect everyone that is on the call. I'm also asking everyone to be on time. Those who are late will hear whatever parts they are catching up on once they join. Um, I'm also asking everyone to hear what everyone is going to say and also agree to disagree if we don't agree. And three minutes max per topic, so for time's sake, we're able to um, literally be able to get through everything. So to start, I'd like to introduce who we are and what we do so you can understand a little bit more about our company. The company at large is Mobile Enterprises, and we have an investor division called International Investors United. My partner, Stephen Smith, and I, his name is also Ibrahim Smith, we are green construction developers. We build residential and commercial structures out of shipping containers, and we do projects domestically and internationally so that we can actually help social issues, so whether it's affordable housing, whether it's other types of commercial spaces that aren't adequate for business owners to reside in while they're doing business, we do a bit of everything. Um, some of our milestones that so far are we have created some permanent affordable housing units for people. Um, we were able to gain 100% local approvals here in the United States as well as abroad. Um, for every single project we have done. So 100% approval rate with the permitting process, with the permitting departments for all of our projects. Um, we have gained some momentum in the D.C. area for accessory dwelling units, which are kind of like your mother-in-law suite or an extra um, housing unit that typically one would have on their property to have a source of income. And so for us, we've had some great progress in the D.C. area being able to do that and also new development in general. 100% of our projects have had success, they have been sustainable, and they're continuing, and we would like for you all to be a part of it. So just to understand a little bit about the container customer. Most of those people who would like to acquire a residential or commercial structure for shipping containers typically are green conscious. They're very smart about money. They desire modernity, and meaning they want something new and modern. So what's great about a lot of what we do is the customer does get to design their dream home. Um, we don't have cookie cutter homes. We allow for the customer to have full creative control. Um, more importantly, um, they are seeking lower costs. So what that means is um, our containers, and you'll see a little bit later what makes our product so unique, um, our containers are actually um, cost effective in the short term and in the long term. And more importantly, people who want containers, they're forward thinkers. They know that the durability and the shift of going from traditional to non-traditional construction is the wave of the future. Some of our challenges that we could possibly come encounter with um, being in the container industry is political polarization and global uncertainty. So 
more to sum that up, it may cause a little bit of issue when our customer, our end user, are getting mortgages. Depending on the economic climate at the time, it could cause some issues. Um, technology boom. Um, as far as technology goes, um, the challenge could be that technology changes so much. I'm not saying that with the container industry per se, it could be a challenge, but in general, overall, as alternative housing measures are implemented more and more in the construction industry, you may find that there are things that's going to change that may be trending at some point in time, but may possibly change later. So what we've been doing is meeting the needs of our customers. So we do do containers, we do geodesic um, domes, and we do other types of housing, depending on what that customer wants. We are flexible in how we primarily provide the service, but our number one goal is to use containers as a recyclable use for things that are just sitting at the ports doing nothing, right? Um, same thing with the political polarization with the mortgages. We are offering in-house financing now, so that kind of throws that out the door. Another challenge that may come up is millennials and baby boomers having some challenges as far as, like, more people wanting to have certain types of housing. So the tiny home movement is really big right now. A lot of people are into tiny homes. However, tiny homes may go away at some point in time. So we stay up on the trends finding out what's most relevant at the time so that we, again, can be flexible to adjust to those changes. And more importantly, retail disruption is how do you pay when the income may change? Like with COVID right now, many people lost their jobs. Many people um, aren't in business right now. And so we offer simple terms that allow for you to also purchase the land and the home, and you'll see later down the line what our program kind of entails some um, vehicles. We have a program that allows for a person to get a car as well. So we'll talk a little bit later in our presentation about that. But retail disruption is us offering in-house solutions to the things that could happen outside of our business. So here's a little statistics so that you kind of understand the types of things that and the reason why housing is so important, why real estate is so important right now. Um, on the screen here, um, rental units and renters in the U.S. matched by affordability and income categories. Now, this is from 2016, but these statistics, National Low Income Housing Coalition, are specific to each area. And so because we are looking at um, developing and buying real estate in different areas, as we get deeper into our project, you'll see I have statistics for every area that we'll be doing business in. And so for this here, this basically explains that um, on the high, high level, either people are extremely low income or they're above medium. So in between, there's just as many um, people who don't have enough money to afford the housing units that they live in. Furthermore, there's not enough housing units available for the people to be able to live in. So the scarcity for the income to housing as well as the availability of housing is very high. And so the reason why we're deep, getting deeper into this real estate aspect of it is so people can really understand the need to get into real estate right now and why we can solve a global issue. Now, this particular slide, you all can't see it, is the 15 fastest growing cities. Um, believe it or not, it's not the areas that we think are it. So I'll briefly read through them really quickly. Buckeye, Arizona, New Bronx, Braunfels, Texas, Apex, New North Carolina, Frisco, Texas, Meridian, Idaho, McKinney, Texas, Georgetown, Texas, Rowlett, Texas, St. Cloud, Florida, Ankeny, Iowa, um, Dublin, California, South Jordan, Utah, Midland, Texas, Castle Rock, California, Colorado, and Round Rock, Texas. Those are the top growing cities, fastest growing cities. And while these aren't the ones that are specifically on our radar, this illustration just kind of explains to us that there are places that are growing faster and have the potential for growth outside of all the major cities that we're commonly aware of, like Atlanta, Philadelphia, New York, Los Angeles, things like that. So the purpose of this um, particular statistic is for us to begin to think outside of the box in areas that we could possibly utilize and acquire real estate in to be able to literally change the lives of people in those areas. Some other statistics are the household type, 
by the income. And so this um, illustration, while you can't may not be able to see it because you're on a call, the link for this video um, to get online to see it is inside our chat box. You have non-disabled, non-elderly without children, non-disabled, non-elderly with children, disabled with children, disabled and senior. The other, all other renter households, so these are people that um, may or may not have a category that's listed on this particular slide, but the housing household type, just so we can understand, this just gives you demographics of the type of people who need housing, but this particular slide specifically focused on people can't afford housing because this is talking about extremely low income renter households. That means almost 75% of people on this particular slide, if you just look at the statistics, are can't afford where they live. Some other things um, to consider minimum wage affects the ability for one to be able to afford um, housing. Um, and, and this particular slide actually explains to you, based on certain states, how much a person needs to make just to be able to afford to live. And most people are, are not making living wages for them to afford to be able to live. And so if we think of potential projects, affordable housing projects could be something really great that we could work on. Now, let's talk about luxury rental and Airbnb. Um, this particular slide breaks down the use, um, some of the statistics for March of this year on why Airbnb is so important. Another potential opportunity for us to do Airbnb. So 150 million people use Airbnb as of March 20 and 20. Two million people stay in air, rather stay in the Airbnb per night versus a hotel. 7 million are using global Airbnb listings, so that's international Airbnb, myself included. <laughs> and 35 billion uh, is how much they're actually making in Airbnb. So even if we had a small percentage that we tapped into with doing some new development for Airbnbs or even a, um, already existing structures and renovating them, um, this is a great opportunity for us. Some other information about Airbnb are some other statistics. So I'm very big on showing you why there's a need for it. Um, on average, um, the amount of days that someone could actually rent their house out for that could possibly get their mortgage. So let's just say you purchased the property that you have a mortgage on and you decided to rent it out for Airbnb. Um, here is an example um, that explains to certain areas, if you were to rent your house out on a daily basis, on a nightly basis, um, how you could easily pay for your mortgage. And so, for instance, um, Albany, New York, you need about six days um, of Airbnb rental for you to be able to pay your mortgage. Knoxville, Tennessee, approximately six days. Denver, Colorado, the max amount you would need is about 16 days in a month. Los Angeles, you need about 20 days in a month. And as you can see with some of these cities, even Columbia, South Carolina is about five and a half days. You can see that these particular cities are based on um, larger locations. So if you're in a smaller town, maybe you're in upstate New York or something where you may not be very far away from you know, New York City and you decided to acquire some property there, turn into a vacation spot, maybe someone has, you know, horses or someone is traveling, you know, from down south and want to go up north so that they can get closer to their family. There's so many reasons and opportunities for you to be able to make the money back if you decided to turn a property into an Airbnb. Um, general statistics, over 150 million users worldwide, six guests check into an Airbnb every second. The average rent for 2018, which was two years ago, was on average $185 a day. There has been over half a billion Airbnb stays since the company started. We have over 650,000 hosts worldwide, 7 million listings, over 220 countries and regions. And as of two, um, January 2020, there are over 100,000 cities with Airbnb listings just here in United States. And as of 2019, 10.4 million guests stayed in Airbnb for the holidays. So even if you just rent it out, you know, <laughs> uh, your house for, you know, Super Bowl or a traditional federal holiday, you could still make some extra money with it. So great opportunity there. 
So let's talk about the product. So you're probably wondering why would someone use shipping containers that benefit them purpose and use and benefit section is going to break that down a little bit. So our product is um, shipping containers. It builds 80% faster time than traditional building. We're able to build houses in less than 30 days. They're eco-friendly and they're recyclable. So outside of that, the durability of it is that they're windproof, waterproof, and fireproof, right? Um, because of uh, the average size that we use, either 20 or 40 foot containers, that a 40 foot container gives you about 320 um, living space, square feet. And so that container, some people say, well, how many containers do I need? You do 33, 20 times however many um, containers you think you would need to get up to the square footage that you desire for your project. More importantly, it's eco-friendly. Um, a lot of people um, are concerned about its impact on the earth, but as of right now, containers are literally just sitting on the port doing nothing, and most of them are rusting out. And so when you acquire containers in bulk, in the earth, you're self-money behind in bulk. More importantly, you're also impact on the and of course, uh, as far as wind goes, it actually um, can handle up to 150 miles per hour. So just think about um, some of the different ways that we can use this in disaster relief areas, areas that are commonly hit by um, floods. So you can get very creative with containers and how it's in order for it to fit a specific need. Now, another part of what we use is something called smart steel. So smart steel is a lot um, pieces that we combine with the shipping container that has an R49 value. It's two pieces of galvanized steel with the foam in between, the R49 insulation, that allows for it to be on the inside or as a replacement for the container. You can use it inside or externally. Um, it has the same properties as a shipping container, has the same durability, as well as is waterproof and is um, also fireproof. So what's great about that when you combine it with the shipping container is literally like a, a capsule. And so if something were to happen around you, whether it's you know, a high winds, flooding, or fire, you will be safe as opposed to other people who may be in your neighboring area. Um, same thing with the container. If you even use it alone, um, it takes about a few hours because the pieces are custom made to each um, project. Once you receive it, it takes a few hours to put together. It literally fits together like puzzle pieces. So it's pretty cool to see. And more importantly, it's also eco-friendly. Everything that's used in it is recyclable as well. Here are some pictures that you all can't see, um, but a picture of one of our projects that we've done for the container. So if you're watching online, if you're looking at the screen, you can see one of our container projects that was in Texas. And you also can see on the right side the use of the smart steel. Again, we combine the two together so that we can truly have something that will withstand the test of time energy as well as nature. And so if you look at this particular project, coupling it with a solar panel, man, the savings are long term very high for the end user. Um, more importantly, people always are wondering what's the cost associated with it. Minimally, some of our houses start at 20000 and up. If it's a multifamily, um, you can go to our website and you'll get that information towards the end. You can see some of the floor plans that's available, some of the projects we've already done, and more importantly, the approximate cost from ground up construction, for ground up construction. Another product that we're actually in the works of making are our own solar panels. So believe it, it's not as hard as you all may think um, to make these. But this is a, a picture of a product that was used through um, MIT many years ago. It was created and was patented by some students there. And I actually spoke to the, the owner, um, the founders of this particular product. What's unique about it is if you created your own solar panels, one, it would house a whole, it would actually um, sustain a whole house, but also if you have multiple ones, it could do the same for commercial properties. And this here, what makes this unique is, is a unique panel. So the sun hits it from every side, 
So the longevity of the product as far as its capabilities and its output is much stronger than your traditional solar panel that if it's flat or if it's not enough shade or not enough sun out, unfortunately, it does not allow for it to work at its maximum capacity. When you have a 360 solar energy product, solar product like this, that's displayed on the screen here, it literally will last a lot longer than your traditional um, uh, solar panel. Furthermore, by it lasting longer, again, cost savings for the end user is superior. Another product that we are going to begin placing inside our homes are our Kangen, our Kangen water machines. The, it's a clean water machine. It actually creates alkaline water up to um, 12 pH, which is great because typically your, your regular water that you drink out of your sink is about neutral, so it's about 7 pH, but the higher your alkaline levels are in your um, body, the best opportunity it can to fight off bacteria, viruses, and other things. And so this particular machine can be connected to the water lines, and you can use it for beauty water, you can use it for cleaning, um, and you can also use it just for your regular drinking water. It's a beautiful thing. So this here just kind of gives you a demonstration. It has some examples of how you can use it um, to cleanse yourself, your animals, your fruits, your vegetables, your house, um, general um, health, also with, of course, cleaning around the house as well, if I did not say that, okay? So you're probably wondering, um, with the containers and the smart steel, um, how exactly does the process work? So the whole process takes up to about 30 days. We typically do a um, consultation with our clients. We do a 3D model rendering so they can see what it looks like inside and out. Um, once it's approved, a deposit is made, and then we begin the blueprints. Um, from there, they're transferred to our plant or our team so they can start the process for the smart still being cut out and customized to that particular property. And then from there, um, within that process, the smart still cuts out for all utilities. So the blueprints and the, the workups are very important. Architecture workups are very important because the smart still manufacturing plant actually cuts out every outlet for everything, whether it's for plumbing, electricity, anything throughout the house. And so it's very important that that process takes place so that we know as soon as it comes in, it's literally almost plug and play. So you order the container, you got your smart still, it comes back in about two to three weeks, and then from there, once it's here, it takes a couple hours to put it all together, and the house is ready to go. It's ready to be moved to the work site, the, plant, the land site, whoever purchased it, and it's ready to go. Um, we're hoping to move towards a more um, plant-built process where we can do everything inside a manufacturing plant um, and be able to easily build more houses in a, a day time, approximately about 20 houses a day. And so that's our end, end goal um, for the company at large, but this kind of gives you an idea of how this all works. Once Smart Seal still is installed, then we literally go to the final steps, which is going to that land site, installing it, collecting final payment, and that project is done about one month's time. So this is just some more information about the Smart Seal, how it can be used um, alone outside of the shipping container. And so now I want to share a little bit about how this benefits everyone and why this is so important. Um, the product itself helps builders by reducing cost and time um, to market. So most builders, when they're building out uh, maybe a 2,000 or 2,500 square foot home, it's taking them 90, sometimes more days to just build something out with our product. And the way that we have it set up is less than 30 days at max maybe 45, even for commercial structures. Um, the end user for the customer, you're using less material, it saves you money in long-term durability-wise, and cost savings when it's coupled with a solar panel, it literally saves you a lot of money. But more importantly, we're a green company, it actually helps and protects the environment. Here's an example of um, if you compare a container home a net zero, net energy, um, zero net energy home to a mobile home. So that's a home that uses solar panels or other energy efficient um, materials and products, which is what we primarily um, do with our company here. Um, so for a 1,900 square foot home that has four bedrooms and two baths, the approximate cost to build 
a traditional mobile home is about $110,000. So I'm comparing it to a mobile home just because of the, the shape of it, right? Um, to build one of our homes, maybe $124,000. Down payment in land for our home, doesn't all of that will be included. Um, and down payment in land for a mobile home, you probably need $10,000 down. You may need to pay $10,000 for the land. And then you may end up with a $90,000 mortgage. So you don't came out of your pocket with a lot of money, whereas if you're getting a custom-built home, typically that's not what you experience. Um, the interest rates um, vary, but this example is showing 5 dollars for the mobile home, 2 dollars for our um, zero-net energy home. And then you may still have the same terms of 30 years, but the monthly payment is a little bit more on our side, but you save significantly more in your energy savings. So a monthly payment on the mobile home side is about $511. A zero net energy home, $525. Your electrical cost in that same home is going to be about $300 a month, whereas in our zero net energy home, because we have energy efficient appliance, energy efficient materials, and we have the solar panels, your electrical costs are going to be about $9 a month. So you may pay a little bit more to have this house, but you also save significantly when it comes to your electrical costs. That's what happens when you have a zero net energy home. So let's talk about how we can benefit from this collaboration. So those who are on the call, you probably got on because you were looking for an understanding on how this benefit us um, as a group. So currently, this is our business model. We do do consulting on projects. We also help with manufacturing of these same products. We have sister companies and distributors that they may buy everything through us and they put it together themselves. We have 15% from sales, 5% from actual development. Sometimes we subcontract the workout, but typically we hire locally. And then rehabs and renovations are 5% of our business. So I just want to share what our overall business model is. Our current marketing strategies are through social media. Um, we are going to be having an interactive site where people can come online, click on our thing, and be able to play and create the dream of their home, the home of their dreams. Um, the app will be included in the site because it will be a web-based application where they literally can go on, pick their container out, pick their colors, their designs, and everything that goes in it. Um, so that they can see what their end user is right now, their end product is. What we use right now is actually we do all that for them. And so the app that's being created will actually allow for them to do this, even if they're, you know, we're asleep and not working at the time. Um, our other strengths are face-to-face. -face. Um, we're working on a manufacturing model um, very soon in three areas of the country. One will be in New York, one will be, well, I'm going to say Northeast, Southeast, and West Coast. Those three areas will have model homes that people can come into and easily just kind of see and peruse what the product looks like, touch, feel, and, and experience what it's like to have a shipping container home or other kind of products because we do do commercial structures as well. And our sales team is strong. We have some really awesome people who help us all around the country be able to acquire new business relationships, and it's been phenomenal for us. Our ultimate growth model, which are our strengths as well, its the main thing is our partnerships. And so right now we have co-developers, and we also have people who actually assist and help um, with, with – um, everything that we do. Um, and so with that, here's what I would say. Um, Co-marketing-wise, um, more importantly, is what's been helping us. So the fact that we have a lot of partners really makes a difference. Um, we also hire locally um, by so that we can stimulate local economies. We do not, um, we do not actually have anything that um, requires us to travel around the country with our own workers. We literally hire locally so that, one, we can get the support of the local residents, but we also are able to literally um, do what we have to do to kind of help and assist in what needs to be done for our local economists. We are very big on making sure that we can do what we have to do with our people wherever we work and wherever we um, help at. Um, cost efficiency-wise, very strong thing. Of course, you know there's about 
probably a 30 to 40 percent saving um, doing a container build um, of any residential or commercial structure than it is for traditional. Um, the longevity is the, this is the future of construction. This is not something that is actually even new, maybe new to some people that are on the call today, but this has been around a really long time and actually has been very useful in many, many opportunities. I mean, I've seen um, stadiums built out of these schools, <laughs> anything you can imagine, all the way down to your tiny home. And so, you know, your restaurants, your your bars, anything to think up can be built with this. And that's what makes it so special. So you know how when we were kids, you would play with your Lego? Think of it that way. This is something that literally if you can take a bunch of pieces put things together, stack them side by side, whatever, you could literally be able to take advantage of it and be able to um, see all the possibilities. And because we have a very quick turnaround time, that's what makes this opportunity very good. So we can literally, as a team right now, think of something, and once we think of something, we literally can go ahead on and do what we got to do to make sure that we can make it happen in the shortest period of time possible. Because right now, the time is now. So for us to be able to move together as a people, we have to take massive action. And right now, when it comes to real estate and construction, this is the probably the best thing out there. And even if y'all didn't think this was the best thing, we're open to other opportunities and other things because we're, we're very well-rounded when it comes to construction. My partner and I have been in the industry for a while now, so it's not new to us. There's nothing out there that we haven't seen. And anytime we see something new, we share with each other. He's like, and we always say, oh, I've seen that before. He'll send something to me. I say, oh, yeah, I've seen that before. So it's pretty cool that you have two people that has done a lot in this industry that knows what's out there already and actually may have even worked on it. So you're, you're with a whole um, group of team that is really good at what they're doing. Some of my partners are on the line right now. So some of our, um, te our team and key stakeholders are the All Bash Group. Um, they're actually one of our um, teams that is up in the Atlanta area that does marketing for us. The Jones Group is who does our marketing for the accessory dwelling units. Um, the Panelized Material Partners and Viral Smart Steel. My co-owner, Ibrahim, he actually is of Greenhawk Solutions, and Whitehawk is his construction partner and brother. Um, Good Works is an organization um, in the Northeast region. They're going to help with our marketing. Um, and then Top Stone is our Georgia real estate agent who actually is willing and open next to the All Bash Group um, to actually market actively once we get a few model homes built up they actually have no problem putting us on the mls um, one thing that it comes to the mls when you talk about comps and people being able to get mortgages from us is what i found was that we would have to create our own comps <laughs> literally we have to create our own comps because containers aren't being used everywhere but we would like to make them the new norm and so this is the reason for this call and then ADA supply actually is one of our container suppliers that's who we get all our containers through here's what you all probably want to know um, where will we be doing these types of projects and so um, more importantly um, we do have relationships in all these areas, and we are open to anywhere because um, there is no place that we have done business yet or would not be able to do business in. So some key areas of projects just based on our current relationships are Atlanta, Georgia, Macon, Georgia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Chicago, Illinois, Oakland, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, Las Cruces, New Mexico, Hancock, New York, Los Angeles, um, California, Baltimore, D.C., the Philippines, Accra, Ghana, um, Costa Rica, Honduras, Puerto Rico, and many others. We have a lot more, but this one slide, I tried to cut it down to how many um, we currently have relationships with, and there are many more. And some of those projects that we can work on in these areas are Airbnb, new construction, accessory dwelling unit, units, uh, renovation and rehabs, affordable housing, group homes, um, your luxury Airbnb, hotels, community revitalization, like in Puerto Rico, St. Thomas, Bahamas, those places that were hit really hard um, with those, um, the natural disasters that we experienced, um, just to name a few. Um, there are really a lot of things that could be had, could be done, 
totally available for us as an option because the containers are at the ports. Um, containers, if you don't know a lot about them, about them, typically they're used specifically for transportation of products to one area to another. So they usually are one trips, which means they only do one trip and they stay wherever their end um, location is, their destination. And so they're typically literally just pile high <laughs> down at the ports. And so as far as you being able to take advantage of that in any area, it would be nothing. That's our base product is the containers. Um, the smart steel is our, our second base product. Everything else we place inside the homes is recyclable as well. Um, and so wherever there is something that we can get, we will uh, – stimulate that local economy and buy there, other than a smart steel that's located here in Georgia, because that's where we're based out of, um, that's the only thing that we would not be able to buy locally. Here are some samples of our work. So some of you may not be online, but again, this is um, being recorded, so you can go back and look at it. Um, here are some interiors of some kitchens and living rooms that we've done. And on our site, there are more. Here are some external pictures. So containers can stay looking like containers, or you can place their kind of material on the outside to make them fit and match the location that they're currently going to be in. Here's a single family. Here's a rendering of a communal layout. So if you wanted to do tiny homes, um, which is something that we're working on now, doing some tiny home communities. This is a rendering of what one of the houses could look like. Here's a, one of our plant-built ones. So now I would like to talk a little bit more about our collective programming. Um, one big thing that we are finalizing is our green building construction program. So we're looking to be registered with the Department of Labor um, so that they can pay 50% of our staff's salary by being a registered Department of Labor participant. Um, we have a green building apprenticeship program, which teaches people how to build from the ground up like we do. Um, they will be um, paired with a mentor. They typically are going to school um, for a low cost or zero cost, depending on the technical college that we have a relationship with. And more importantly, upon completion, which is about a two-year program, they will be making about $45 an hour. They start out at $15 an hour, and then they move to incremental increases every six months until they complete the program, and they'll be at about $45 an hour. And then from there, our goal is built into the program is that they'll be um, entrepreneur partners versus employees of us. So they actually work for us for that two-year period upon graduation at that two-year mark, they will be starting their own business. Everything that they learn will help them be GC ready. So as a general contractor, you will have your own business. Typically, you're not a general contractor working for someone else. And so that's the purpose of our program. Some other things that we want to look into is community outreach so that we can foster collaboration and self-sufficiency. So uh, me personally, my partner and I, we are a social entrepreneur, so we like to solve problems. Um, so some of our projects will have their own project website um, so they can have full transparency so the communities can see what we're doing and how we're doing and who all is involved. Um, also have discussion on board so they can talk to us and ask us how they can participate and all of that. So as we're building these communities out, we are including the communities as well. So it's not just um, us buying areas up and not um, making it inclusive for those who live in those areas. We want them to participate because we want them to take ownership over it. You know, we want them to be able to engage and also be able to influence how that area would shape and turn. Um, we also will hold public meetings to get um, community input as well once COVID is over, of course. <laughs> We're looking at job growth. Um, do that apprenticeship program is going to increase jobs locally depending on each area we do it. Now, mind you, this is a project that can be done anywhere in the world. So typically job growth for these type of projects could be around a 30% mark. Um, I also wanted 
us to consider, um, and this is something we already are doing, if we are saying as a group, as an investor group, that we're not going to do it, it's fine, but we actually have some car and van share programs that we want to build into it to kind of reduce people's ability to be able to acquire and get back to work. Um, then of course, if they're working for us, that's one thing. We can also um, say that with an in-house but for people that were actually selling the houses too, if they don't have cars and they don't have access to work, how can they pay their mortgages? And so we would come up with some kind of car or van share program that actually allows for them to be able to get back and forth to get their groceries, whatever, you know, just something as a, a communal um, program that can help and assist in their self-sufficiency. Um, home buying counseling, uh, we already have a relationship with Operation Hope of the Hope Foundation where they actually will come in and teach them about financial literacy for free. Uh, we have this partnership already in place and it's strictly designed to help people kind of get more informed on how to spend their money, how to budget and save so they can continue to be homeowners. Um, and that actually will be a requirement for our new developments. Um, we don't want people who you know, it's a great idea to want to own homes and we'll make it affordable for them. But if they've never had that experience before, if they never knew how to budget and save and spend their money properly so that they can continue to have a self-sufficient life, some people may need that actual assistance. And so that's why this is built into our programs. Uh, we also have STEAM programs working with the young people. We have relationships with some local schools here. Um, and we also are going to have a young adult apprenticeship program where the young people can come in and they'll work alongside the adults and be able to learn construction just like our adults are learning it from their mentors. Some other things that we already are doing outside of us presenting this to you all are community gardens. They'll have mentors, um, family mentors. So what I learned is, and this is my own personal thing growing up, um, my mom died when I was really young and my father had been incarcerated, so I may have had challenges growing up on how to deal with people either of the same sex or the opposite sex. And not just that, I didn't have a family structure where we sat down at dinners and we did things together. I think the last family reunion we had probably was about 30 years ago. And so I think it's very important um, when we're engaging in our community to help them be self-sufficient is to help them understand how they can be a family unit. And they can change and, and disengage some of those um, negative patterns that may not help their family unit growing up. And so you can change generational curses. That's the purpose of family mentoring and one-to-one -one mentoring. Um, entrepreneurship, we want um, to encourage and engage people in becoming um, business owners versus having to look for jobs. We do have an entrepreneur curriculum. I'm a SCORE mentor, and I'm also in the chapter chair um, for the SCORE here in my city. And I actually um, have created a, a, a program, Entrepreneur School, that actually help people from idea to conception to, to thriving in their business be able to literally um, help themselves um, be self-sufficient through business ownership. They'll have opportunities to invest with us and more importantly communication training. So sometimes we don't know how to talk to each other. Sometimes we don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to articulate ourselves. And so some of these things are excuse me, ways that people can become more self-sufficient, um, not only on themselves, but within their businesses, within their jobs. So these um, programs will help tremendously. So what's in it for you as investors? I'm sure you want to know. <laughs> so our growth model says that in about five years, if we build uh, about 10 communities a year, um, we can make close to um, $120 million. Um, the first year can easily be anywhere from 5 to $10 million, moving towards the $20 million mark, uh, 40, 60, 80, 120 over a course of time. We have a full-on business plan if you want to see the specific details on our growth model, but literally you'll be able to do that through us moving from site built to plant built. And we're actually looking for some manufacturing plants right now. Um, if we move to the plant built model, which will be modular, um, just similar to how mobile homes are built, um, it actually will allow for us to make 20 houses or more a day. Some of our competitors are methodhomes.net, Sheltercraft, Intershelter, and Stillwater Dwellings. 
Um, these are prefabs. Some of them are domes. Some of them are containers. Um, and so if we do the prefab model, um, even with cost alone, we would shut them all out. <laughs> and so these are our competitors in case you guys want to look this up. Again, this is being recorded. You can go back and look at it later. Um, investor options. So this is probably you want to know how do I get involved. So there are four options mainly available. Um, all projects have an investment cap. So you cannot invest more than a certain amount. And then we also want to have a cap on how many investors are in each project, just so that we can have a good return on our investment. Um, you, can, you can contribute to all types, but if there's a max on how much you can place or how many um, people are in, on in it, any one project, it's like first come, first serve. Um, there are agreements available. If you want the agreement, you can look at it, peruse it, send it to your lawyer, make sure it's legit, it fits your needs, and you can move forward. Um, everyone has to be a part of the consultation process, so we need to understand what your goals are as an investment, how much you're looking to make, what kind of projects you want to engage in. And as of right now, the four types are residential, Airbnb, commercial, and international projects. Those are the four projects that are available for people to be able to participate in. And this here also shows that no more than 100000 per person on a residential buy-in on Airbnb, no more than 300000 no more than 500000 on commercial, and no more than $1 million per person per project. Okay? Again, this is all recorded. You'll be able to see this. And all projects will be um, – done by wire transfer. We will create an LLC, an anonymous LLC specifically for us to all be partners on for these different projects. And we're no more than 10 projects per LLC. So we may have to make multiple ones to accommodate what we're trying to do. Um, and project equity is only equivalent, equivalent to the contribution of all the investors. So if we're saying there's no more than 10 investors, each investor will do 10% per project. Some of our exit strategies, um, one, um, you can get your own free home or free structure. Um, profits can be turned into a built home. Um, for the Airbnb buy-in, you can turn a profit into an Airbnb source. Um, if you want to reinvest into one of our programs, you just take the money that you made and reinvest it back into one of our projects. Or you can be bought out when the home is sold if we are to sell out, because some of our projects will be buying holds, so you could be bought out the other way by someone purchasing your spot as well. So you're wondering, how are we solving housing and employment challenges? One, uh, by allowing affordable housing choices to be ready, readily available to all residents. We create transitional options to aid in self-sufficiency. So that's where some of that programming was coming in at. We build sustainable houses that withstand weather and time. We remove target populations from homeless and poor quality housing. So we solve issues by changing people from having poor quality housing to higher quality housing as well as availability because people are also homeless because there's not enough places for people to live. So that's oftentimes why we see a lot of people living in one house, you know, kind of what they say is piled on top of each other um, because they have, they can't afford to live anyplace else. They're not making enough money. So part of our program, um, the apprenticeship program helps create new businesses, help people become more sustainable. We give them all the tools they need in our apprenticeship program so that they can acquire um, the amount of education they need to have a sustainable career as well as making really good money doing it. And guess what? They can be a customer too. They may want to buy one of the houses that we're building. So all of that is available to us and them. And you're probably wondering how does the International Investors Unit benefit you? Um, and the following five ways are just some of how we can benefit you because we're not just a construction company and we're not just business consultants or any of the other things that we said were our business revenue sources. We're actually about to become DTCC certified, which means that we can discharge mortgages. 
Um, at some point in time, the goal is for us to be our own bank. So by being our own bank, it actually allows for us to have full control over how money is being used amongst our group. Um, and more importantly, we're also able to help our our family and our customers in a way that they don't teach us in school. In fact, the only people that know that is people who are the top CEOs of banking institutions. So when we become our own bank in the upcoming weeks, you'll find that we'll have those same capabilities to acquire mortgages and discharge them legally. We have classes on that. Um, we have a 100% permit approval rate. Um, our architecture partner is phenomenal. And when I tell you this woman, she got gold hands. I don't know what she does, but every time we present something to a local department, we get 100% approval rates. We never have challenges. So we don't ask questions. We just let her do what we do. If she does, stay in her, she stays in her lane. We stay in ours, and we are a good pair. And we want to be a good partner to you as well. So whatever strategies and skill sets you have, it's the same applies for you. Um, our turnaround time is typically less than 30 days. Um, we would like to set up a real estate trust so that we can continually protect our assets. Um, other things that we offer are a shelf corporation, CPNs, trade lines, offshore accounts, other types of trusts set up. We can do a real estate investment trust if that makes the most sense for our group, but it has to be a trust. That's the only way that we can protect what we're going to grow and build with this particular project. And so this is just some of the ways that we can help. By all means, you're more than welcome to ask more questions about some of these things that's on this slide, but I did want to at least throw that out there to know, like, you're not part in, partnering with just somebody who just wants your money. We actually want to collaborate. We actually want to change the environment for our communities, but more importantly, we want to be able to help you protect yourself as investors in our program. So we are now at the end of this presentation. And so what I would like to say to you all, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and feel free to ask your questions. You can also send questions if you don't want to ask them to info at shippingliving.com. You can also call us at 888-412-8362, extension 3. And by all means, you can visit our website at www dot shipping living dot com and so I will allow for phones to be unmuted if you guys have questions feel free to do so if not this is the end of the presentation um, if you want to move forward we do need an email from you guys so send us an email info at shipping living dot com um, give us the information that hey I'm ready to move forward We'll set you up in our Facebook group. It's called International Investors United. You can find us on Facebook um, so that you can actually access the other group members. We have about 11 people already in there, and we have more that's going to be added in the upcoming weeks. And so feel free to join us there um, if you're ready to get started instead of sending an email, whichever is preferable to you. And so I'm going to exit out of this and go back to the call to see if there are any more people that may want to ask questions. And if you all don't, that is perfect. Um, and then you guys can go ahead on and send us an email if you want to move forward. Um, there, we have opportunities internationally, a lot of different places. So please feel free to reach out to us and ask your questions, and I will make sure that our team answers them for you. And so I'll stay on for about 60 more seconds. If you guys don't have any other questions that find, this recording will be available in literally 30 minutes once I press the meeting. So I will happily, um, if you text me, 478-719-8000, um, uh, you can easily be able to get this recording. We get off. So I'll stay about 60 more seconds in the call. Thank you guys so much for your time today.
All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.